putting this back here. Next up, we're going to be talking about stable party companions. Yo, Gabby, yo, Sap, welcome back to the end. I'm doing the Nova Ethos Guide right now for YouTube. So now we're going to be talking about companions and stable parties. Um, and we're going to be going to this screen. And I'm going to be switching up to that page. So, first of all, this stands uh, for all mods, with very, very few exceptions. Grab all of the companions first and send them to gather right to rule. All of them, send them to gather right to rule, so you receive three right to rule from each one of compa the companions. To do this, you talk with the companion, you'd like to ask him something, and over here, you'll have the option, uh, do you know that I wish to become king or queen of this realm? Do you know that I wish that I inspire to be ruler? You're gonna be clicking on that, and then the companion will be going away for a while, for a, for a week or two, to gather that the said right to rule for you, to spread your name. So do that with all of the characters. Once you do that, now we're gonna be talking about who to keep and who not to keep. So, uh, again, we're gonna be selecting a first party and then a second party. In the first party, you're gonna be gathering the companions that you'll be able to create into your vassals and also some stable party members that you're going to be keeping uh, so they provide different stats for your party. So, the companions that you need to have in the first party are Theodwin, he is a martial lord, and he's going to be a vassal. Eric the Navigator, he's a cunning lord, and you will be able to make him into a vassal in case of emergencies. Ferentis, He's an, excellent, he's an excellent vassal, he's an upstanding personality, and he's awesome. Uh, but then we have Rolfin. So Rolfin, again, cunning, exactly like Eric. You create him into a companion just in case of emergencies. Uh, also, I know I know this is, a, this is Rolf from the base game. They simply had in, as in he is a descendant of Rolf. Rolfin. That's his name in the game. And then we have Matheld. She's again a martial com companion, a martial vassal that you're going to be creating in the late game. Besides these guys, you also want to take Cedric. Uh, Cedric is also a noble, but he's pitiless. So don't make him to a lord. Keep him as your trainer, or we'll, we'll talk about how to level up your intellect characters in a bit. Uh, Cedric Quinius Gregors. Let's see if I missed anybody. Nope, that's it. And that's it. And another thing that I meant I need to mention: always make Theodwin your first companion, uh, your first companion into a vassal. Because if you make Theodwin into a vassal, you'll be able to take Nisaria and Marnus as permanent characters for your party. These are common people, and you can make them permanent characters. Once you make uh, Theodwin, Eric, Ferentis, Matheld into, oh, and uh, Rolfin into vassals you can grab the rest of the party members and the rest of the companions are in case you're wondering uh jeremus seraph um lorena jejara nisaria catherine and terran um these are simply common common companions that you can grab afterwards and you should be perfectly fine now let's talk um Oh, and yes, that's a good question. Does cunning here work like in Pendor? When you're given three thieves, you will turn into Marshall. Or is that a Prophecy of Pendor only feature? That is a Prophecy of Pendor only feature, Eric Nader. But um, because of the way um, vassals act in Nova Ethos, it is much easier to manage a cunning lord than in other mods. And I'm going to be explaining more on that once we get to the kingdom management stage of the game. Okay, now let's talk real quick about how to level up and prepare your companions to become vassals. And we don't have Theodwin because we already made him into a vassal, so we'll take Metheld as an example. Um, three things you need to take into consideration when creating a vassal uh, when creating a companion as a vassal, three things, strength, leadership, and pathfinding. Strength, 
leadership and pathfinding. Yes, Dudley Patrick, I am creating the Nova Ethos Guide right now. And thank you for becoming a follower, dude. I will do a shout out after the guide. Thank you. All right, so strength because you will take into consideration doing auto cal pathfinding because um the speed of the lord of the vassal on the field on the world map matters you know sometimes he will not be able he will run away faster or he will catch up to enemies and then uh prison no not prisoner management leadership to have a bigger army size sadly prisoner management does not matter because they don't have a prisoner management limit and trainer does not matter because I really haven't seen any difference from a lord with trainer or without trainer. But as you level them up, you can put some extra points into trainer because it will help your own party as you keep them as companions during battle. So a good balance that I would recommend is give them 15 strength. Also, train them up as mounted lancers. Give them 15 strength. And then bring their charisma up to 18, ideally 21. But once you reach uh, charisma 18, you can already make them into vassals if you wish. <clears throat> Hello, Chris. Indeed, guide time. <sighs> All right. So that's it for um, companions that you wish to make into vassals. Now, what about companions that will be remain with you in your party? How do you level them up? How do you spec them up? Okay, so let's see who provides good shit. I have currently Quinius, Cedric, and Gregors. Let's go to Gregors, first of all. So these are your typical um, intellect companion archetypes. You can either go with strength 9 or strength 12, depending on the strength of the crossbow that you, you want to give them, and then simply dump everything into intellect. Simply dump everything into intellect, or charisma or charisma if you want to have a traitor character with you okay or an emissary character which is actually recommended we're going to go through all of them and i'm going to discuss about each one of the companions uh each one of the companion archetypes that i've created so in case of gregors he is my pathfinder so i just gave him strength nine because he really doesn't need any more than that i have him equipped with a normal crossbow with 49 piercing damage and with the best gear that i can get you can actually can get away you can get away with nine strength because of the low armor cost in the game as you can see a battle half armor with 59 body armor has no strength requirement whatsoever so that is awesome that's fucking amazing um thus just nine strength i feel like it's more than enough for them and go nuts on intellect so in this case, I've leveled up his pathfinding, spotting and tracking, and trainer as much as possible. Trainer remains the universal stat that you need to stack on all characters to level up your armies as fast as possible. Keep that in mind. Okay, that's it for Gregor's. Let's go to Cedric. Now in Cedric's case, again, 9 strength and then we went pure into intellect. In Cedric's case, yes, we did make him into a emissary type character because persuasion in this world is based on intellect. I've also specialized him into engineering, into tactics, and into trainer. And as you can see, I still have a little bit of ways to go with him. Can still bring that intellect up to 30, and we're going to be upgrading these to 10. So that is fucking awesome. Again, same setup. I gave him a crossbow, a bag of bolts, the best armor that I can find, and sword and board. Okay, and then we have Quinius. Now, Quinius is a little bit different from the rest of the intellect characters, but I still put him in the intellect category because he's still a character that provides a specific stat for my, for my party, and that stat is looting in this case. So again, strength 9 and then dump everything into agility, and I focused on mostly intellect, uh, sorry, not intellect, uh, focused on looting as much as possible and weapon master in this case. Um, for some odd reason, he still has three trade. I'm not sure if I put those there or no, 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 I have not put those there. He had this from the beginning because to reach three trade, you need charisma nine. You can also opt of creating 
So that's it. That's it for what characters uh, I have. But for the rest of the companions that you're going to be getting into the second party, you can also create a charisma, a pure charisma character, and just focus on trade as much as you can, as much as you can. Leadership doesn't stack in this mod, so there's no point in you adding leadership to your companions. So just put charisma and bring that trade up. And I think that's it for covering the party as you can see because i've specialized my own character as a medic which i recommend you do i have 14 surgery so pretty immoral army i'm still working on first aid and wound treatment but are less important quinius is providing trade and looting cedric is providing engineer and tactics gregor is providing spotting pathfinding and tracking and i think you will be sexy for the rest of the game Okay, let me check to see if I need to add anything to over here. No, no, I don't think I need to add anything over here. Remember that the characters that you're going to be, uh, the companions that you're going to be making into vassals will also have their own lord traits and character traits that I've mentioned as your main character does. Okay, 